a master at something in North America. In North America, Without there's no, program. there's no, um, um, in order to do that, you would have to have an organization that sets certain standards. Susan Engraver. <laughs> and you and you know it's not just setting those standards. You would have everybody to agree that those are the standards, right? right? So um, I think, to my knowledge, the term master over here is loosely applied, yeah. um, because there is no s set of standards. Um, um, you know, I mean, you know, you go to, through a GIA program, so there are certain things in the trades or in the skills that you have to know how to do reliably and to certain specifications. So this is why, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're interested in stone cutting, you know, the, the stone has to have a certain amount of facets and they have to be angled in a certain way. And if you can master this or if you can repeat this reliably, yes, you know, you have achieved a certain skill. But for the people in the art, Where's, I mean, where's the standard, right? Um, um, so that is very <laughs> difficult over here. But in, in Europe, you, uh, there are set standards and everybody agrees that yes, you know, you have to be able to do this in order to move past that stage. So, uh, but this comes from the tradition, you know, which you guys don't have. Mm -hmm. And I think, I would venture a guess that even though I would like this very much over here, I'm one of the few who would, because Americans are a little different from Europeans. You guys like to be a little bit more free-flowing and don't like these kind of restrictions. And uh, I know this is you know, a, a huge generalization, but I would think that establishing standards and having people adhere to certain standards might receive some pushback. That would be my guess, in the States at least. Maybe not in Canada. Maybe you're more European. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying you know this is, this is bad, but this is I th I think a difficulty. If you wanted to establish something at this point in time, everybody would have to agree that this is now the norm. And people don't like norms. <laughs> Anybody else got anything else? You haven't asked me anything about marketing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I'm talking about Vancouver now, such as there yeah. is in Europe. And, and we don't have a population base, such as there is in the US. And we don't, I would say, generally speaking, we, and I don't mean the people here, but societally, politically, there isn't a lot of reverence for history, where we're tearing down a lot of the old buildings and the old architecture and so on, which I think contributes to our cultural makeup. So there is no market here for art jewelry. Um, we have a community that we're starting here, and I think that contributes. But how do you educate the potential buyers? How, how like, beating off from Dana's question, where do you go? Strength in numbers, first off. You know, you have a community, so you started with the first step. Um, we had a conversation about that a little earlier during the day, and um, it's, it's basically a marketing question. Um, my suggestion to you in your specific case would be um, that you uh, continue as a group and market yourself as a group. For instance, how about you guys create a little brochure with a map of Vancouver, and each of every one of you gets you know, a certain segment in that brochure where you can talk about what is who you are, where you sell, and the, the type of work that you make, and then it's like a visitor's guide, like a little brochure, and you can put ads in there if you want to, and then you have this brochure and give it to, um, uh, uh, the, the, the places downtown that deal with uh, customers in general. People like maps, and then you could market this as a tour 
you know, this is what Vancouver has to offer. So there are a ton of metalsmiths out here, and you could visit these studios. So just pooling what it is that you already have going and making it as a group would be the first thing I would do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely first thing. Um, and uh, uh, just so that people know you actually exist. And it only makes sense as a group because people are not interested in one person, but if all of a sudden 10 people are within a certain geographic region and I know about it, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I can you know visit these, these three, four people mm -hmm. uh, in an afternoon and make a thing of it. It could be seen. It's all of a sudden it's something that's really going on, yeah. right? And you could hand out those brochures to um, tourist organizations, to the cruise ships, to the big hotels, to the concierge. Um, you know, everybody gets a, a certain geographic region and approaches three people in that region and, and hands out these brochures. Because that would be there's no lack of money in Vancouver, right? Do you agree? I mean, there's lots of money coming into the city. Right. Uh, so but you are your own best supporters, and making it known that way, mm -hmm. that would be um, the first thing. Um, I would also ally myself with organizations that um, are also um, in, into visual things, so architecture, uh, interior architecture, realtors, any, any group that deals with the visual image in order to create a reaction is your friend. Not only the other crafts, but businesses. Um, and maybe you've tried this, or probably you have, um, approaching businesses um, and asking if you can put up a vitrine with your work. And they don't have to do anything. You come, you put up the vitrine in their place, and they can just, you know, sell the work on the side and get a little cut. Mm -hmm. Really be creative about the environment. It doesn't have to be a craft environment. Mm -hmm. It could be something that is allied. Mm -hmm. You could ask an architecture office if you could put up a vitrine downtown. Those people have money. They have, they know design. Mm -hmm. They're used to look at things visually. They, they're used to look at things three-dimensionally. That would be, I would really, completely not think about traditional galleries, not thinking about traditional retail uh, situation, but go absolutely outside, outside of the box, as they say. Be really creative about it. And strength is in numbers. If I could get a map from a tourist office or from the concierge in my hotel, if I would, and I've asked the concierge in my hotel, okay, where is the artsy stuff here? And she thought, and she sent me, she thought about it a little, and then she sent me to Town, which was, you know, good for me, and I liked it. But how about she could have just given me the brochure and said, here's a map of all the jewelry people in Vancouver with their contact information. Mm -hmm. Why don't you look at this? Mm -hmm. Strength is in numbers, and you have this going here already. So this definitely speaks to the idea of um, you know, tourists and tourist dollars. You kind of mentioned this a little bit with the cruise ship and this whole idea where you know, and I completely agree, when people have their wallets open and they're on vacation, they do tend to spend, you know, that's definitely one time to spend, but the other maybe segment of a population that it would be nice to access is like a collector. And what, what kind of access do you think, um, or what kind of avenues do you think there are for accessing that kind of person? There, I don't know how it is in Canada, in the United States, there are collector groups mm -hmm. um, that are known. So, for instance, uh, in the United States, it's the uh, in New York City, the uh, James Renwick Alliance that's ally allied with the um, uh, the Renwick Museum, the New Craft Museum, um, and those people uh, like to buy and they like to buy jewelry and they like to travel. They're really big spenders. <coughs> um, you know, those people don't help themselves, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's very hard to um, get to know them and to find a way in. So do people often use, uh, I've been asked this, so I have no idea, no exposure to it, the idea that people have agents to represent them. Is that something that's maybe done more in the States and I just don't? Mm -hmm. I think that's really the role of the gallery, traditionally okay. speaking. 
if you have an, if you have the money to pay somebody to do your marketing for you, yeah, then you don't have to do it, right? Yeah. Um, lucky you. Lucky yeah. you. Yeah. Um, sure, you know, uh, but I don't know anybody who does this. Okay. Um, if you find someone, send them my way. <laughs> um, yeah, you could try. You know, hire somebody who's mm -hmm. so hard it is to handle your PR. Yeah, hire somebody yeah. who's your PR department. Yeah. You know, which is a smart thing uh, to begin with. You don't have to do everything yourself. You yeah. just have to uh, do the things that you enjoy and, and, and do very well, and things that you don't enjoy, like bookkeeping, mm -hmm. you know, uh, doing your taxes, um, uh, that kind of stuff. You can absolutely farm it out. You know, or even when you run little uh, production lines, by all means farm some of that stuff out, yeah. you know, because your time is much more valuable in the big scheme of things and you know, somebody else can help you do, do repetitive stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just have a question about like, online um, selling and just uh, uh, any suggestions about like uh, increasing online purchases or if it's even possible uh, uh, after a certain price point if people haven't tried on the item previously like, and not using Etsy like trying to oh, yeah. get people through your website yeah like, like if it's tagged online sales or, people do buy online but it's usually in the lower price points mm -hmm. and that with that I mean you know I mean if you're lucky 125 mm -hmm. if you're lucky um, I'd say most online sales, I don't know, 70, 75, and it's a trust issue, mm -hmm. right? If I know you and I know your work and I see, I see something that I like online, yeah, you know, I'm inclined to buy it. But if I don't know you, if I don't know the quality of your work, 75 bucks I can probably part with, and if the work is crap, then okay, right? But um, most people are very cautious online. It's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Um, your best bet is, I think, to go with somebody who does selling professionally. Um, so that would be somebody like an artful home. I don't know if they yeah. sell up here. You know, um, they function in the role of the gallery. You know, the gallery used to be the, the conduit and, and the um, appraiser and the guarantee for quality. And that might entice people to buy your work if you go through one of those venues. If you try to do it on your own, you, you will always fight the up, uphill battle of convincing people that they don't need to be scared. Mm -hmm. I think it's very hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't do it. And Etsy, forget it. Mm -hmm. You know, chances of your work being found on Etsy are practically non-existent, unless you, you put in a ton of work, and even then. Didn't, did you start on Craft House and online? I, I did it because I, I was asked to do right. it and it went okay, but it takes, uh, I took it down for the time being because it takes a lot of time, yeah. right? You know, you need to get the photography right and put everything online to make sure, you know, this all works and every click actually leads to a result and there was so much time that was right. involved and then, you know, when stuff tur uh, sells and you have to put, I mean, just a different set of yeah. inventory. And then, you know, the question is also, because it's not my work, it's somebody else's work, do I uh, have it physically in Chicago? And it was, oh my God, you know, it was yeah. just so, such a nightmare. And I thought, you know, there's so many other things that actually make me money. I'm just going to step away from this for a moment. So until I have time to do it. Is one that you I think they're very reputable. Yep. Yeah, they're and reputable. Then, you know any other sorry, sorry, I missed that. What did you say to say? Artful Home. The Artful Home oh. is like an online okay. store where you can list your work for sale. And so was, you get jewelled in. You yeah. get in. Um, it's not a free for all. Yeah. But they are they're reputable. And um, you know, with reputable I mean they have generally quality stuff and they send you a check reliably. That which is, is reputable. Right. If you don't get paid, don't work with people who don't pay you. <laughs> right. That's right. Anything else? Business, marketing, marketing accounting, that fun stuff. I'm not an accounting expert. My advice is don't do it. Give it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, 
basically, I think, uh, I, people, this is, you know, maybe the number one question I always get asked is, is it possible to make a living in the art? And I'm thinking, what do I say? Because, you know, the person who's asking the question wants to hear a certain answer. And they want to hear the answer, yes, <laughs> it is possible. Um, in my experience, um, I don't want to say it's impossible. I can count on one hand, with great difficulty, on one hand, the people who are like you and I, one-person businesses, maybe two-person businesses, if they have a little helper, who can make a go of it. I can count on one hand. And sometimes I'm really surprised when I- Who don't I, have a secondary job like teaching. Who don't have a secondary job, like you teaching teacher or, or anything else. They just mm -hmm. make their work. They so. just make their work and live off it. Yeah. Very few people can do this. And you know a lot of people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I say most people, most people um, can stay afloat somewhat, but they always have another job, at least one other job at the side. And that could be teaching in an academic setting, which to me is not making money off of your work, you're making money off of teaching. Yeah. Or they do, you know, any, any other kind of corporate job, that's fine. Or, you know, waitressing, or whatever it is that they have to do in order to, um, you know, live their, live their jewelry habit life. Um, and that's completely fine. I do five, six different things. I work like a crazy person. I get up and, you know, I get up at five o'clock every day. I'm at my desk at 6.30 and I have two teenage children. Um, and I work every day, no exception. Till Saturday, 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock at night. Saturday, Sunday, the only day I work part-time is Thanksgiving. <laughs> every day. If you are self-employed, you're going to work like a crazy person. There's no dropping the pen at 3, 4 o'clock on a Friday, because if somebody calls you and wants something, man, that's when you spring into action. You will work insane hours to make this work, and it's completely normal. Completely normal. And anybody who tells you otherwise doesn't know what they're talking about. If you're, <laughs> if you're in business for yourself, you always have something going on in your mind. You're thinking about your work, you're thinking about your customer, you have to take photos, you have to put them online, you have to sell, you have, may have to travel to a show. When you travel to a show, you have to prepare for that show. You have to buy stuff, buy materials, create a ton of work, price it out. That's a whole other discussion, the pricing discussion. How do I price my work? And then you have to travel to the location, you have to have a table and a tent. Those are all expenses. Right? And then you're out of the, the studio for five days and, you know, return. So that all has to kind of shake out in the end financially. And that means insane hours of work, which is entirely normal. I'm not unusual in, you know, or, or, or particularly crazy in what I'm doing. That is normal. But it is the only thing that you want to do. And you have to give it everything that you have. If you think you can get into this art thing wholeheartedly and just kind of, you know, slouch off every now and then, hang out online, you know, do crazy stuff with your friends, that's another hour when you didn't make any money. That's another hour that's, that you miss. You only have so much time in a week. So you have to be very, very aware of how you spend your time. Because that one sale that you make during the year is not going to sustain you. You have to make sales reliably every month. So what you figure out is the cost side of things. How much rent do I pay? What's electricity? What's insurance? How much do I have a car? Yes, no. Gas? That insurance. Uh, and I need to put food on the table. So what's that amount of money that I need every month just to survive? You haven't saved. You haven't paid into health insurance, nothing. Just the bare necessities to survive. That's the amount of money that you need to make reliably, not once, not twice, but every single month. So you want to think twice about goofing off on social media, on Craft House or on Facebook, right? Because that's an hour that you don't get back and that's an hour that you didn't have made any money and that's what it really boils down to. If you want to be successful, it needs to be sustainable. 
Now you choose exactly those 20 hours a day that you want to work, that's your choice. <laughs> but it's going to be an insane amount of work. But it's the only thing that makes you happy, so it's worth it. It really is worth it, but you have to pick one thing, make that your best effort. Now if you choose to, or if you have a side job, you're waitressing, that takes time away from that, but it offers you income. So, you know, you try to strike a balance, and that's completely fine. That's completely fine. I think uh, um, there's somehow, there's the idea out there that if you don't do this full time, right, and if you kind of do things on the side, that you're not the real deal, that you're not a real artist. I don't know where this comes from. I mean, you know, you need to survive. So everything that you can do in order to survive, while still doing your work in some shape, I think you're a success story. <laughs> and I applaud you for not giving up. Because a lot of people give up. It's, it's a damn hard life. Well, um, on that note, I think... <laughs> 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 I wish it was like, <laughs> In a way, I see that as a positive thing, because you're all here. Yeah. And you don't have to be here, and you've chosen to be here, and we're all here together as a community. And, um, I'm really encouraged that it's growing and um, people like Brigitte are coming to visit us and she's had a fabulous visit and really enjoyed it. So, and I'm sure she'll be back again. Sure, sure. She wants to come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you all for, for coming. And I have some prizes. Who wants a prize? Okay, thank you everybody. <laughs>